Okay, has to work for something like 80 days in the year. That's nearly a month longer than the worst off medieval peasants. What's more, the feudal arrangement was a two-way thing. The Lord had responsibilities to his peasants. In fact, twice a year he was supposed to lay on feasts for them as a sort of thank you. I can't remember the last time the taxman took me out for a slap-up dinner. Or a picnic. Of course, the lord of the manor lived like a lord. But what kind of a stinking hovel would its peasants have called home? The answer can be found at Britain's newest, oldest village, Cosmaston, on the outskirts of Cardiff, where a team of archaeologists have painstakingly recreated a complete medieval village. There's a surprising range of properties on offer. First up, a medieval bachelor pad, or rather, an affordable studio apartment suitable for the single working peasant. Oh, must have been pretty unpleasant life, must not it? It could be quite grim, but again, we've got to get rid of all of our modern views on what makes a good life. Uh, so this is the, how the lowest of the low would live. Yeah, we're right at the bottom, yeah. It's quite, it's quite spacious, really. Well, that's right, he has a nice little cottage, but that's about all he has going for him. Yeah. So what does he do? This, uh, he's a landless labourer. Here's a chap who's his land taken bottom, away bottom right heat. at the bottom. And so he's got a, a fire. He's cooking himself something. Yeah, very basic pot here above his half. Tiny amounts of wood that be used. None of the roaring fires mm. that we'd think of mm. because all of his wood has to pay the Lord of the Manor wood penny, go out into the woods and he can just collect what's fallen. And he's got a bed, I see. Delightful bed here, uh -huh. with just a mattress full of straw thrown on top of it and a couple of rough old woolen blankets. Plenty of fleas, I expect. Hopefully right. not too bad, because hanging above them, we have some flea bane. Oh. So in theory, that keeps the fleas away. If that was the bottom of the bottom of the heap, what was it like on the top of the bottom of the heap? Next on the tour, an upmarket, semi-detached family home. A decidedly des res for the upwardly mobile professional peasant couple. So whose house is this, Nick? Now this is the Reeves house. And what's a Reeves? So, tell me what we're Reeves going up market here. Every yeah. year, the free men of the village yeah. vote yeah. for who they want to be the Reeve. Yeah. And the Reeve is almost like a village manager. Keeps an eye on things, makes sure that everybody's farming the land properly. Yeah. This is a wealthy man, a wealthy villager. So he doesn't make his money out of being Reeve. He owns a lot of land. That's right. He is the Land Rover yeah. Green Welly yeah. farmer. And a very, very upper class uh, fireplace. Oh, he can yeah. afford it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. A Welsh dresser, I see. Uh, very important, especially <laughs> with the Reeves wife. The yeah. first thing you see as you come in is her fine pottery display. So she's showing it off to everybody. Showing her jugs off to everybody. Look how rich I am. Exactly. <laughs> we have some nice examples here. This one is Saint-Onge pottery. Sounds French to me. That's right, this has come up from the Bordeaux region, yeah. probably as part of the wine trade from that area. Anybody amongst the peasants is going to be drinking wine. It's going to be the Reeve and his family. Doesn't sound that bad to me, then. Maybe, maybe I could be a medieval peasant. I'll, I'll think about it. Strip wood floors, shelves of holiday knick-knacks, and a nice drop of Bordeaux wine. Maybe the medieval ideal home wasn't so different from today's. But I'm still a bit nervous about what they had to eat. It's this. Pottage. Hmm. Evidently, the recipe for pottage is take anything and put it into a pan of water and boil it up for two hours. Now, the reason you have to boil everything you pick out of the fields for two hours is because they used human excrement on the fields. So even uh, lettuce had to be boiled, which made the salads rather soggy. Anyway, let's try the pottage. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's uh, pretty disgusting. Um, but you could have um, cheered it up, I suppose, with um, a few herbs, maybe even some garlic. They also had an instant form of pottage, and you could take this into the fields with you, and then you could uh, liquefy it with a bit of beer and uh, eat that if you wanted to. Anyway, the good news about being a peasant was that you got to drink plenty of beer. Um, they didn't have hops until 1420 when they were imported from Flanders. So before that, you had to flavour the beer with uh, other things, uh, like bog myrtle this one's flavoured with. Um, it's basically the same sort of stuff. Let's have a, a taste of that. Of course, they, 
they tended to drink uh, alcoholic drinks rather than water because the uh, water was uh, usually not very drinkable. Um, oh, oh, that's very nice actually. Every village was dominated by its church and the peasants' social life revolved around it. The medieval church certainly knew how to attract a congregation. It was the place where the peasants had their parties, where they did their amateur dramatics and where they even held football matches. Oh, and the local priest often used to brew his own beer, which is certainly more of a draw than playing the guitar. And the church expected its peasants to be duly grateful. Here in Painswick, Gloucestershire, a rather quaint ceremony has survived from medieval times. Peasants would show their love of the church by giving it a big hug. Welcome everyone to this year's clipping service. Well, I think uh, we have our arms right the way round the church. And so now we're going to embrace or we're going to clip our lovely church. Another reason they were so fond of the church may have been that it provided plenty of holidays, or rather, holy days. If you thought we have more leisure time today, think again. Nowadays, we enjoy eight public holidays a year. In the Middle Ages, the church insisted on 80. Well, a clearer picture of peasant lifestyle seems to be emerging. But I wanted to really get under their skin, so I was introduced to some real-life medieval peasants. Far from being sickly and diseased, forensic studies have revealed that the inhabitants of a remote Yorkshire village received surprisingly sophisticated health care. What about this chap here? We've got a skull with a big hole in the middle of it. Right, well, this is absolutely extraordinary. What this seems to be is a, a cranial injury that was treated by neurological surgery. This individual suffered a blunt injury to the head just around the time of the Norman Conquest. Yeah. Where this hole is, that would have been where the bone was shattered into small fragments. And if you look carefully at this, you can see where the surgeon made his incisions. Oh, 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 oh. The guy's been hit on the head, and the surgeon said, I've got to get rid of those pieces of fragments of skull. They mm. knew that was bad to have the fragments of skull. Exactly, there. yes. So this guy's wandering around with a hole in his head. Oh, yes, yes. I mean, this, this would have been covered by his scalp. Um, well, a bit of skin would have grown over it. Oh, yes, yes, exactly. Yes, he wouldn't have had a hole right through to the brain. Um, and he'd have been perfectly all right. Yeah. The bones reveal that some peasants lived well into their 60s. And whilst there are signs of malnutrition, their diet did have its benefits. One of the, the upsides yeah. is that they did have quite good dental health. Um, there is very little tooth decay. And we can that's see. That's here, because they're not having sugar and stuff like they're that. They're not having sugar, and also it's yeah. a very coarse diet which tend to scour the teeth clean. Yeah. And we can see this here, and that means that there's no chance for dental decay to get started. But a toothbrush still wouldn't have gone amiss in some cases. If we look at this one here, as you can see, these huge shaggy deposits on the teeth. Oh, it's disgusting. Right, well, this is actually mineralised dental plaque. <laughs> this has accumulated over the years yeah. of his life. And that shows quite clearly there's no effort at, at, at oral yeah, hygiene yeah. amongst these people. Oh, God, he must have had terrible breath. Chronic halitosis seems to have been a bit of an issue. In Wales, a peasant woman could divorce her husband on the grounds of bad breath. Clearly, they weren't stupid. And historians now believe that the peasant class wasn't as ignorant as was once assumed either. It was all about getting your child in the right school, which in the Middle Ages meant being snapped up by the church. Village priests often taught the sons of villagers their ABC, and perhaps one in ten of these boys would go on into the clergy. Some sons of peasants went on to become high-flying members of the intelligentsia, like this chap here, William of Wickham. William may have been born a humble peasant, but he rose to become the richest and one of the most powerful men in England. He was Lord Chancellor not once, but twice, and he put his fortune to good use. He founded this place, one of the oldest public schools in the country, Winchester College. Oh, very nice. <laughs> William never forgot his origins. 
and he established this school to provide education.